Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at the developmental needs of children ages uh, five and six, that is children who are in upper KG and grade one. And we had a question, uh, you know, if you prepare for, uh, you know, your class uh, and something goes wrong, you know, children are not able to uh, enjoy what you're telling them or, you know, a game or an activity or a, a craft work or, you, you know, um, teaching them something. Uh, so what do you do? I think what we need to really do for children in these age groups is um, we need to understand their um, uh, their developmental needs. So you need to be aware of the children that you are teaching, what are their specific needs, their developmental needs, which will help you to prepare effectively for your class. Okay, so that is one thing. The second thing we need to also do is we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit. I think it's very important uh, to pray and ask the Holy Spirit um, to guide you on what um, activities, object lessons, how best to engage the children in the class, how best to use your time, and what are the narratives to use in these um, uh, in the uh, in the points the topics that you have uh, chosen, okay. Uh, but sometimes, yes, things can go wrong in the sense that maybe the craft was too elaborate and the kids were not able to do it and they're not able to finish or the game uh, that you had planned didn't work out, you know, um, or they were not able to learn a, a specific song that you were teaching them. It doesn't matter. What you can do is you can quickly move on to the next activity that you have planned for uh, them. Okay. Um, for example, the craft didn't work out. It was too elaborate. Things were not working. Kids were not able to do it. You can say, okay, children, uh, you know, um, we'll end our craft time now. I have something exciting for you. And then maybe you can get them to play a game or you can give them a coloring sheet or to color or you can get them to, you know, sing some action songs or teach them a new song with an action that reiterates the, the narrative that you thought. So you need to have um, alternate things planned up in your mind so that if one fails you uh, move on to the other but that is why it's important uh, but most often it won't because you have kept in mind what are the developmental needs how to cater to them uh, spiritually mentally emotionally physically how to uh, best enhance um, the time that you have uh, because you have studied this age group you know what their needs are uh, the curriculum you've built you have the story um, but uh, the part the the failure can be on our part and how we narrated the story we haven't spent time we didn't go through it in our minds uh, and all of those things it's all a learning experience which we can do better um, the next step did that help Divya yeah yes yes ma'am Yes, uh, surely. And uh, you had another I, question? yeah, I had like a follow up. Uh, one is uh, like uh, many times um, what I have uh, encountered is we try to control the outcome um, because we we have got we have got to you know keep the uh, the session um, in a way that. Uh, helps the kids as well as uh, you know uh, is beneficial uh, for everyone who participates in the session uh, so um, it can bring a pressure right on the teacher on wh whoever is teaching uh, so yeah how best you can um, not be over you know uh, trying to control the situation um, how best is that you know um, have, we'll be able to do it in a graceful manner like especially for kids who who may not be able to understand where you're coming from or what you're coming at uh, so what would be a graceful way uh, to uh, help out the kids as well as you know maybe other people are helping you out in the class as well okay thank you for your question Dibya. uh i uh that's why for every lesson 
plan you have to learn. we will uh, we will i'll be uh, i'll be doing that in one of our sessions on how to uh, it's part of the course on how to write a lesson plan and we look at the various ingredients uh, or the points that we need to keep in mind while writing a lesson plan so when you write a lesson plan you have to have lesson objectives uh, which will be two or three objectives max for these children this age group will just be one maximum two and everything uh, is centered around the main truth or the lesson obje objective that you are teaching so um, even if your game time or your activity time or your story time uh, didn't go well what is your main objective the the lesson objective for that day is that you know children should learn that god loves them now, if you've got this truth ingrained in their mind in some way uh, through the course of that uh, the session that you took, then that is what you could have done best. But sometimes we can have great games, great activities, great craft, and all the kids enjoyed, narrated the story well. But, you know, uh, ask the children what they learned. They just show you their craft or their coloring sheet or, you know, they said, okay, we learned about uh, uh, blind men, Bartimaeus, or we learned about Zacchaeus. That is not reaching our objective. Your objective should be that at the end of the class, I should say, you know, what did you learn today is Jesus loves me very, very much. So that is what you need to look at as your objective and uh, what you need to uh, uh, get at your goal. If you've reached that as your goal, then you know, that's the greatest thing that you've done. And you, when you're having this lesson plan written out with the learning objectives, it's uh, the, the core teachers who are along with you also know the lesson objectives and all are in sync and all are working towards this lesson objective being, uh, you know, uh, reached at the end of the uh, uh, session. So whether it is for any age group, it's important when you write a lesson, you're teaching or taking a session, you have to have lesson objectives. What am I trying to, what is the end result? The end of this, the children should not have just learned some action songs or had a good time or, uh, you know, uh, enjoyed the game or the craft. But at the end of the day, they should be able to tell you that Jesus loves me or, you know, uh, God is good or uh, God created everything perfect. See, that is a lesson objective which you need to, and if you uh, get that, and if you've reached that, then, you know, a great job you've done. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That really helps. Yeah. Thank you, Divya. Yes, Shafina? Yeah. Uh, I just want to say one of the challenges that I had in Children's Church when I thought the beginners, the very starting times, uh, when 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 a child gets angry <laughs> on the other child, uh, how do you actually handle it? Like when they say something that's wrong, even though we tell them they should not be doing, uh, I don't think we can call them personally and speak. Or I don't know how to handle those kind of situations. I just try to calm down. Uh, the things, but yet sometimes I see things repeat, like until they know what they're doing is right or wrong. So how do you handle it when something like this happens? Yeah, so what you can basically do, Jeffina, is get them both, because two, two children are involved, ask what each of them did, and uh, then, you know, clarify it with each of them. So maybe you can say, hey, actually what uh, he or she was telling you or doing, he didn't mean to hurt you or uh, for you to get hurt or you know for you to fall down or to push you they was just doing the action song and accidentally your hand the, uh, the hand hit so next time what you should do is when you're doing action songs we'll make sure that all children are double arm distance okay children so everyone double arm distance now and let's do the action so that we don't hurt anyone so then the child is learning that hey it got hurt accidentally. So is it okay now? Is it okay? It's just an accident. But if the child says, no, the child, you know, came and pinched me. 
So you can ask the child, why did you pinch uh, him or her? You know, and uh, the child is just being naughty and, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, being playful. And so you can ask them, is this, uh, you know, Jesus is here. He saw you pinching and you know, would he be happy with what you did? You know, devil is very happy that you did it. You know, Jesus is not. Um, so do you think you should be doing this? Um, uh, then the child will say no. So why don't you say sorry? And the child will say sorry or the child doesn't say sorry also you need to learn teach the child to say sorry and wait for the child to say sorry and then ask the other child will you forgive uh, him now he said sorry yes We're good friends now shake hands give each other a hug or whatever and then you continue the singing so even when you're doing some uh, kind of disciplining or teaching them it's okay to do it in front of everyone uh, because uh, they are in an age where they don't feel very self-conscious and you know, it's hurting my ego or, you know, I'm, I'm being, uh, uh, I'm being disciplined in front of everyone. You can't do this for older age groups, children in grade six and above. They get really, you know, uh, angry and they won't come back to children's church. So for this children, it's okay because you're teaching them self-help skills. You're teaching them how to be empathetic, sympathetic, uh, put others the sun in, in their place, understand others and help each other. So it's okay for this. Does that help, Jeff? Okay. Good questions. Anyone else has any questions? Uh, and I also have one more. Like, any suggestions you have for uh, the games? And <laughs> every time when I go to the children's church, this game becomes a big task for me to just sit and think what game I should play. And children, nowadays, I think they want something new even. They don't want the things they know already. So you have any websites or anything that you follow through, look after for the games or crafts or activities that you suggest in certain stretch? I think uh, uh, the lesson plans that are written already has uh, games and activities and object lessons, no, Jeffina? I think we need to follow that and keep at that. Uh, you know, sometimes children can dictate terms to us. And when we when we keep doing what they're asking us to do, they think that they can they can rule uh, and take over. But what we need to do is you can, you need to stick to the lesson plan that is given to you. So you can say, hey, you know, uh, today we won't be playing uh, a game, but I have something interesting for you. So, you know, uh, they need to know that Children's Church is not all about just games. Uh, it's also about other things. So, you know, so you can say, they'll say, ma'am, today we didn't have any games. They said, maybe next week we'll have uh, game time. So if you play games every time, it's going to be boring. So let's do something different. So you can get them to enact this. Uh, uh, some role, uh, skits have role plays, object lessons, you know, uh, activities. So different things you can do. Uh, but if you're going to keep always games for them, then they will think children's church is all just about uh, games. And that that will be kind of a mindset which they can pressurize other teachers to do. And like you said, we'll run out of games. But um, uh, if you go up to the website, if you, you know, there are a lot of websites that has a lot of creative uh, games and activities for various topics. So again, if you are having games, uh, whatever activity you're doing for that day, it should be centered around the main truth or the learning objective and the topic. Oh, when you go out. Um, yeah, if you, you just type out, you know, uh, 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 games or activities uh, uh, on uh, for love or to teach children about forgiveness or faith or obedience, you'll have many websites and you can uh, find a creative uh, game. Uh, and you can also uh, make changes in that games to tailor it to your, uh, to our Indian setting and uh, other stuff. Yes, you can find many. Okay, any other questions, any thoughts, anything you'd like to share? Okay, if not, we will move on to uh, developmental needs of children ages um, uh, 7 to 9. This is basically children uh, in uh, grades, uh, moving on from grade 1, they're moving to grade 2, uh, right up to grade uh, 4, okay? So these children, they live in the present you know, um, everything is centered around the present, what they're doing. Um, they learn best from creative activities. So for this age group, you have to be very, very creative. 
you know, um, uh, even when you're narrating a story, doing various things, you need to be very creative. They love to learn, explore, and investigate, which means they love to examine things, study, consider. So, you know, um, there are a lot of websites which have science object lessons, uh, which can uh, help us to uh, creatively teach about various concepts and very interesting. You know, object lessons are very uh, nice. I will, I will talk about object lessons when um, when I do lesson plans, uh, so you can, um, you know, because they love to um, uh, love by learning and exploring. So you'll have to give them object lessons, uh, various games, puzzles, uh, not just for fun, but to get them to think. Okay, what did we learn from this game? What did we learn from this puzzle? What did we learn from this attention getter? You know, um, or from this case scenario, or the, through this small skit that we enacted. What did we learn? So they love to uh, they learn well by exploring, investigating, examining, and considering. Okay, they also think concretely, which means. Um, um, Concrete thinking is uh, the reasoning that is based on what uh, you can see, hear, feel, and experience in the here and now. So that is why we said that they live in the present and they learn best by uh, from by exploring and investigating. Uh, uh, so they they think concretely and they think concretely by using um, their uh, five sense senses, uh, learning through experience. Okay, so. Um, Concrete thinking is also called as literal thinking um, because it's uh, a reasoning that focuses on uh, physical objects, immediate ex uh, experiences, and exact interpretations. So they will also learn well uh, by case scenarios. And you give case scenarios, you know, case scenarios of children in their same age, uh, same age level, and the same um, uh, needs, the felt needs. The, the challenges that they go through so you know you can bring out the learning better through um, that okay they're also growing rapidly in their language skills so you can slowly upscale your um, you know uh, language with them not keep it too uh, simple yeah, you need to keep it a little more simple because there's only second and uh, to grade four. Uh, but, you know, uh, be careful when you're talking about Christian jargons like righteousness and sanctification and we're justified by faith and, you know, and all of those things. They will not just be able to understand. But since they're learning language uh, rapidly, uh, they can understand a little more better. Uh, they're also able to read with uh, a lot more ease and they read uh, to get more information. So they, you can get them to look up things in the Bible, at least turn to the passage, uh, you know, they're able to copy passages from the Bible or textbook. So you can get them to write down the memory verse, um, you know, also write in one or two lines uh, the passage that they read and what they understood. So if you're giving them passages in the week based on the topic that you taught them on Sunday, you can get them to write down in one or two lines what they understood from what they read. They're also able to answer questions with short um, uh, answers or sentences. Uh, they're also able to, you know, play um, word games. Um, and they're also able to give oral reports. So if, for example, if you ask them, hey, how did you practice what you learned the previous week? Uh, they're able to give you a report orally because their language speaking skills have improved considerably. OK? Um, they are able now at this age to differentiate between fact and fantasy. You know, in the previous two age groups, we saw they're very imaginative, full of, you know, in the imaginary world and fantasy world, pretend play. But here they're able to uh, sort out fact from uh, fantasy. Uh, and this age group, they believe everything you tell them. Okay, so so good age to basically tell them about sin, salvation, uh, forgiveness, um, you know, uh, God can heal and how they can go and heal and how they can go and uh, teach and, you know, share the gospel of Jesus with others. Um, so they believe everything you tell them uh, and they speak literally because they understand literally. So if you tell them, hey, when you go and share your know, Jesus with your friends you can tell them this 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 they'll just go exactly and tell them what you have told them in class okay 
uh, the way they think are subject to their emotions and to their uh, self-esteem, okay? So if they're worried or unhappy, uh, you know, they will not concentrate uh, or they will not think properly. Um, and they generally, they don't have a strength to overcome this until, you know, uh, their worries are sorted out, until you deal with them, until you help them. So you can say, hey, I'm noticing, uh, Jonah, that you are looking very sad, you're very upset, is there anything wrong? You know, or Johnny, what happened? You're looking very sad today, uh, you know, and Johnny can tell you that, you know, on the way to church, the mom shouted at him, or he woke up late, and dad gave him a shouting, or, you know, he's he doesn't want to go to school tomorrow because he has a test and he's scared, you know. Um, so you can uh, help them. They won't concentrate in your class unless their problem is dealt with. So maybe you need to deal with it, and maybe you can tell them, encourage them, and, you know, pray with them, and, uh, you know, get it sorted out so that they can concentrate in their uh, class. Now, if their self-esteem is very low, uh, they may be reluctant to, uh, you know, try new tasks. So maybe sometimes, you know, you can uh, look at children when you're giving them some activity or some game to play. They don't want to do it, uh, which means you can sense that, uh, you know, they might be unwell or they might be sad and disappointed. Like I said, something would have happened, but it can also be a reason of self-esteem. And self-esteem is very low, so they don't want to try new tasks. And it's a good age for you to invest and mentor them uh, to build a healthy self-esteem, uh, um, self-image, a self-value about themselves. Um, okay. Physically, they're growing slowly, uh, but sporadically. Uh, they have bursts of energy, but they have trouble sitting still. Okay, So even when you're teaching them, uh, uh, narrating the story, you will have to use them up in front. So you know, you'll know you have to get them up in front and say, oh, now suppose you're talking with Zach, your story, okay, who's the tallest person? Who's the shortest person? And you know, why do you, uh, you know, being short, uh, do you like being short? You can ask the short, uh, you know, um, uh, a, a child uh, so you can do that maybe you know uh, uh, you can say you know when Lazarus Jesus raised up Lazarus from the grave you can send out one child and uh, beforehand you can tell the child to wrap himself up in a white shawl a white to Pata and then you know um, uh, you can send them out of the class and then you say when Jesus said Lazarus uh, come out you can open the door and then Lazarus comes with you know the child comes with all the you know uh, the shawl wrapped a right white shawl a white sheet wrapped around him and everybody's so excited or you can have some child and uh, uh, you know while you're narrating the story act like blind Bartimaeus you know just going and bumping into the wall or to the uh, to the chair or so they like to do things, you know, uh, they they have trouble sitting still. So maybe even in your narrating the uh, story, you know, you can use various um, activities. For example, uh, you're you're talking about the the plagues that God sent to Israel. Now it's going to be very boring, even if you show them the pictures and all. Each plague, you know, ten of them, they're going to be so it's going to be so boring for them. So you say every time you you tell them that you know. Um, God removed the plague, but Pharaoh was hard-hearted, you know, he was hard-hearted. So you can say, when I say hard-hearted, you have to do, he was hard-hearted and he refused to let the people go. So they are listening to you and, you know, they're waiting for the moment when they can do that action, okay? So, you know, uh, so God removed all the frogs from the uh, from Egypt, but when Pharaoh heard that all the frogs had gone, Pharaoh was hard-hearted, so they'd all be ready to do this, and he refused to let the people go. So, you know, um, uh, for example, if you're narrating the, uh, uh, you'll have to think very creatively for all of these, you know, ask God for creativity, the Holy Spirit. When you're narrating about the storm, you can, okay, you can say one group is, one child is going to make the wind blow, so it's a hmm the wind is blowing and the rain and the, the disciples are shouting so you can have children shouting and screaming hey you know pour out the water quick hey I'm falling and all of those things so, so when you can say when the boat was moving when I say the boat was moving all of you should move like this and like this and like this so you know you get them to do various things where um, uh, because they have trouble sitting still you know you need to get them to be very engaging in your uh, story time with them uh, even if they have uh, super energy, 
you know, have bursts of energy. They can get tired very easily. Uh, children, these children also love to help. So get a lot of help when you're going to do activities, object lessons, uh, get them to enact, you know, be an example and all of those things. They just uh, uh, love to uh, do it. Okay. Um, and even when they love to help, you know, um, um, it just boosts their self-confidence, okay? And gives every chance, uh, give every child in the class to help. There might be some children who don't uh, like to do it. There are some people who jump up, some may not, but give every child a chance to help. And, um, you know, uh, provide classroom jobs for all the kids so that they can ter take turns accomplishing it. And it can just boost their self-confidence, their self-image, and their self-esteem. The next one is spiritually, they enjoy learning at church. They enjoy coming to children's church. They're open about learning, God, to, uh, learning about God. They pray easily if encouraged. So it's a good age group to teach them to pray and encourage them to pray and appreciate them for praying. Uh, if they don't know how to pray, what they usually do, what do you do when a child, you ask a child to come up in front and pray and, you know, all of the children are saying, no, we don't want to pray. We don't want to pray. So what? What will you do at that time? How will you encourage them to pray? Any thoughts? What can you do to help children in this age group to pray? Yes, Lubega. I think I can go for a win-win strategy, whereby, like for my girls, uh, I have some girls at home, when uh, they are like not wanting to do anything, and I'm not going specifically for prayer, I would pick one of their things that they like most, and I would tell them that if they help me do what I would, I want them to do, then I would also allow them to do the other, the other thing that they love to do. Okay, so basically a reward kind of a system where, hey, if you do this and you help me, you get this reward. Yeah, that works best. What else? Thank you, Pega. Yes, Divya? Yeah, one thing uh, that I could think of uh, is like, uh, just imagine if Jesus is present in the room, how would you talk to him regarding this need? Uh, as something that I don't know whether it, it would motivate them to pray, but yeah, yeah, that's what I could think of. Okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead, Divya. Sorry, ma'am, that was very mistake. Okay. Um, what I would... There is, yeah. also, th there is also a stick and carrot strategy. Okay. Uh, stick and carrot would mean that uh, the reverse is is true also on what we said. Like in case they, I tell them that we you must do this, and I see that they are not willing to do it, and then I can say, you know what, you like to visit your grandmother. Now this Christmas you're spending the whole night with you. You will spend the entire festival with me since you wouldn't like to do that. So never do it again until and also you won't go there. Okay. Thank you, Lubega. So in the context of prayer, what I usually do is when children don't want to come up in front, I'll say, hey, come up. Uh, I'll, I'll ask one child to come up and I'll say, I'll help you pray. So what I do is I stand behind them and in their ear, I whisper a, a, a short phrase and they say it. And the next, I say the next phrase and they say it. And then I third phrase and I say it. So that way, is, you know, it it's, it's just them learning and also encouraging them and saying okay you now just like i helped you to pray next time when you come up in front when you don't know what to pray for you know you have somebody who's unseen that is the holy spirit and you know holy spirit just like i kept telling you sentences and lines and words the holy spirit will do that so you're also teaching them about the holy spirit how the holy spirit can help them you know so even when i am not around them and they are elsewhere you know they don't have to be afraid because they can go up and or they can pray and they can ask the holy spirit the holy spirit will put words in their uh, mouth okay so that is what i used to uh, do okay um okay we'll move on um 
So they pray easily if encouraged. And uh, like I said, they accept everything what you tell them. Okay. Uh, they also, at this age, you know, memorize a lot of sections of scripture, uh, a lot of scripture passages, so you can get them to learn Psalm 23, the Lord's Prayer, uh, memorize the books of the Bible, the names of the disciples, the fruit of the Spirit, and, you know, all of those things you can uh, get them to memorize. Um, they can also learn to pray together and individually. They also begin to understand the historical view of the Bible. Uh, what are the spiritual messages they need to hear? Salvation, um, sin, salvation, forgiveness, what Jesus did for them. Uh, you can lead them into accepting Jesus as their savior. You know, um, also that God loves everyone uh, and God loves everyone. They also know and they also meet. That means they're friends so they can share the love of Jesus with um, um, others, you know, um, and God knows all about them, all the challenges, the difficulties that they're going through and God loves them just the way they are. Uh, God has a wonderful plan for their lives. Uh, you know, they can trust God because God will never leave them nor forsake them. Uh, God is all powerful. Uh, he's, you can talk about the nature of God, uh, you know, that he's all powerful, all knowing, always uh, 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 present, omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. And um, even if they do some naughty things, even if they do some wrong things, uh, some bad things, you know, there is um, nothing that can cause them to uh, lose God's love for them. So ingrain this whole concept of God's love. Uh, in their minds very, very strongly, a good age to do that. And Jesus is the only way, okay? And we are saved by grace and not by works. This is something that you can begin teaching them. Um, and you can, also, they can, you can also talk about evangelism, that they can go and tell others what God has done for them. Because it's, as I said, this age group, they literally do whatever you tell them. They take you word by word. You ask them to do something, they would just literally do exactly um, that. Okay. Uh, emotionally, they find it difficult to express their emotions. So you just need to um, help them out, help them understand, help them to be vocal, use vocabulary to explain what they are going through and understand what they are uh, going through. Okay. Socially, uh, they love to have best friends, but they change their friends often because, you know, they have a lot of fights, misunderstandings and all of that. They mimic their adults in their lives. So it's good, uh, you know, at this age to be a good role model uh, to each one of them. Like us, uh, when we, I think, uh, last class, um, I remember, I think it was success and um, Abu Bakr who was talking about, you know, how children are influenced by their parents and all that they're teaching them and all that's happening at home. But here, uh, you know, these children ages, uh, uh, you know, in, in grades two to four, they mimic their adults uh, in everything that they do. So, you know, you can set life standards. You can set, uh, you know, uh, how to live their lives, how to, uh, you know, uh, order their lives in a way that is honoring and pleasing and worthy in God's sight. And it's an excellent age to mentor them and mold them uh, in that way. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, they mimic you, they follow what you say, they do exactly what you say, because they are very loyal to teachers. Uh, they are also developing a sense of right and wrong. So, you know, you can teach them more about it, help them to do the things that are right, um, you know, uh, ask them to pray about it and ask God to give them the strength to do it. They enjoy working in groups. Um, at the same time, you know, uh, don't have a lot of competitions because children in this age, you know, they don't take to losing games or activities very well. Okay, they can get very, very disappointed. It can lower their self-image, self-esteem. You can have um, a child who throws up tantrums, very moody, will not cooperate with you for the rest of the class. So don't have uh, games that are competitive in nature. Uh, you know, let's see who does first and who does this uh, and all of those things. Um, 
you know, keep it very, very minimal, even if you're having competitions, uh, but also good to not totally uh, remove competitions, because when you do that, you're not teaching them uh, to be healthy when they take part in competitions. It's also important for them to learn that, you know, they lose, but they can also win and how what they did to win, what they did to lose and how they can work better the next time. OK. Uh, they will come to you with a lot of uh, help they need to you know, sort out arguments and disagreements when they're playing games, doing activities, when they have a problem with their other friend. Okay, They may be a bit brash and bossy or timid and uncertain, but that is the way they are. Uh, you need to channelize things. You have to mold them. You have to build them up. Uh, so be very, very uh, sensitive. Um, uh, be firm at times, be loving at times as well, uh, firm and loving at the same time. Uh, but don't, um, uh, you know, uh, don't be taken over by them being brash and bossy and uh, at times and also uncertain and timid. That's how they are. Uh, but you need to just help them uh, to channelize things in the right way. Okay. Um, children who are six years can be a bit bossy and demanding. Uh, children who are seven, you know, they tend to worry and take life very, very seriously. Um, eight years old are very enthusiastic and outgoing. Uh, children who, come, who are nine years old, they kind of become independent and rather uh, rebellious. Okay, just a bit about that. So how to teach uh, these kids um, effectively? Children who are um, ages... Um, seven to nine who are in grade two and four, how to teach them um, effectively. You know, uh, each child is unique, okay? Each of them are different. Each of them are unique. They have the strengths and weaknesses, help them uh, provide activities for experimenting and exploring because they lo love to learn through experimenting and to doing activities, exploring things, um, uh, you know, help them to, uh, make ac applications here and now because they live in the present. So when you're teaching them, you know, you need to help them. How are you going to apply what you have learned? Don't keep it for them to do it next week, but this week itself, you need to help them to uh, learn. Okay. Uh, plan something active for each class. Uh, uh, the, uh, like I said, this these children you know, can't sit still. They are very engaging. So you have to have... Uh, some activity um, for each class, okay? Um, uh, they also can read and write, so use their reading, writing skills. They're improved in their uh, uh, moving of their hands and their, uh, you know, their, their fingers. Uh, so use, uh, you can you give them more craft activities to do. You don't have to do all the major craft activities like for the other two age groups, but here you can get them to cut and, you know, uh, draw and uh, stick and all of those things. Um, avoid working on details. They, their craft activities may not be very, very detail to the core, but it's OK. Uh, because they are learning to differentiate between fantasy and fact. You can explain things to them. Also, uh, get them to pray and worship, uh, which uh, should become a natural part of you, uh, of your um, sessions with them, their learning. Um, and uh, you know, be worthy of their respect and admiration. Because children in this age group you know, are basically uh, you know, uh, they love to mimic you. Uh, you know, they are um, they uh, they are just taking whatever you are telling them. You know, so it's very important that you are you know be worthy of their respect and admiration. The way you the way you live, where you speak, the way you act, the way you do things uh, should be worthy of their respect and um, admiration. Okay. Just a minute, please. Yeah. So what can you do for children in this age group? Um, you know, listen to their lives, what they're going through. Um, encourage them in realistic ways. Uh, it's important to give them individual time. So mentoring at this age is very, very important. So when you're mentoring, you can share your life because they just uh, copy you. They just do what you're saying. They just um, 
you know, say, hey, my teacher did this, I also should do this, you know, so good time to just, uh, you know, just feed into their lives, just pour into their lives, and also take time to build a relationship with every child, because uh, they love their um, teachers, they love their, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, caretakers, they love the children's church teachers, uh, they're just learning from you, copying you, so it's a good time to just pour into their lives in this age group. Okay, and also a time when they are just basically taking everything that you are saying, just receiving it and doing exactly so important. You can just feed into their lives and pour into their lives. Okay, any uh, questions you'll have for this age group? Seven to nine? Anything you all want to say? Anything you all want to share? No questions? Yes, Divya? Yeah, uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, the, uh, especially with kids' church, and uh, it happens mostly once in a week, right? And uh, if we are uh, taking the case uh, where we go to for church, it's like different teachers every week. Uh, so how uh, I, I think it would be a challenge for, you know, the teachers to build a relationship with the kids um, because it's unlike schools where the uh, kids are going five days a week and they have the same teacher. Uh, basically, so uh, what are some ways in which uh, the kids have a good relationship with the teach the you know, Sunday school teachers, and they could they're comfortable sharing, you know, their things that are happening with them. Yeah, thank you, Divya, for raising that up. I think it's a big challenge, um, but what. Um, what I did when I took over Children's Church at APC was to ensure, uh, you know, uh, to have just two teachers teaching each class for that whole academic year. Uh, they would uh, teach alternative al alternate Sundays, uh, and I think that is important so that, you know, we can do mentoring. But nowadays, I think it's a challenge because um, not many people want to sign up for Children's Church, and they know that um, I, I know in the U.S., you know, they have a lot of, uh, uh, they have a huge volunteer group for Children's Church. I, I remember visiting my my sister's church and they had around, I, I went and met the Children's Church pastors. They had two Children's Church pastors and I asked him how many volunteers that they, they are. He said around 170 and I was quite uh, amazed you know at the level of commitment because you have so many services and you know and um, I can understand that you know people take turns and it's not uh, every Sunday that can be a challenge actually um, but a good model to follow is at least have um, you know two teachers teaching the same uh, 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 class but also can be challenging in the in the other side is uh, sometimes you know because there are multiple services uh, children uh, the parents can decide to come for the eight o'clock service okay they, they can plan to come for the nine thirty service or they can can plan to come to the eleven thirty service and that way if you know it's it uh, they're not in sync with the teachers uh, uh, come. So uh, that can be another challenge. But for us here, we had only one service at, uh, at APC Central, so 10.30. So everyone had to come for that one service. So they're not coming to church, they wouldn't land up. Um, but now again, it's becoming challenging for us because we have the 8.30 service as well. Uh, so what best we can do? Uh, any ideas anyone can, uh, what uh, anyone has? What do you think we sh can do in such scenarios? For this age group especially. Hello, any suggestions, any thoughts?
No suggestions? I think what best can be done is uh, the teacher who's teaching, you know, in that class, you know, um, taking that session, uh, can just share uh, from their own life example what they he or she did, uh, you know, or just talk about their love for Jesus or how you know they love reading the Word of God or how uh, you know they love singing or worshiping God or what they did when they were in their age with that challenge, you know, and how God helped them. Um, that will stick in a child's uh, mind and life. So in the best given scenario of what can be done with all these limitations, I think it's important to pour out um, our lives, to pour out what God has done and how we encountered situations that children in that age group can go through and what can be best done. Sure, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, that, that really helps. Uh, that's correct, yeah. Okay, any other questions anyone else has? All of you there in class? Is this helpful or getting boring? <laughs> okay, thank you, Subhashis and Zelatoli. Yes, okay, Pastor, it's helpful. Thank you. Okay, uh, any questions, any queries? Thank you, Rubega. Thank you, Roslyn. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll move on to, we just have four more minutes. Um, we'll move on to children in ages 10 to 12. Okay. So these are basically children who are uh, in grades 5 to 7. Okay. So what is the goal for this age? Um, accepting self, they're learning more about their strengths and gifts because they are actually in this age group, you can call them as preteens, right? I think uh, when we were in school and all, uh, preteens would have been like, you know, somewhere in eighth and ninth grade. But nowadays, I think fifth standard itself, fifth graders can also be called as preteens because the rapid pace in which they're growing, the information, the technology, the things that they're learning. Uh, so basically, they're preteens and they're uh, becoming very self-conscious, self-image. You know, they're learning more about their own uh, strengths, their own gifts. Um, they're learning to make friends and get along with others well, in spite of the challenges they are facing. And they're also learning uh, techniques to resolve conflict and to handle their own emotions. Because uh, preteens, you know, their emotions are on a roller coaster. They're not able to understand things um, uh, because of the changes, hormonal changes that are happening. Uh, you know, nowadays we have children growing uh, reaching puberty as fast as, uh, you know, they're in age, uh, in grade six and grade seven as well. You know, so a lot of hormonal changes that are happening. And because of that, there's a lot of emotional uh, roller coaster that they're going through, you know, uh, turmoil that they're going through. And because of that, they get into a lot of conflicts. So they're trying to find techniques to resolve con conflicts and understand or handle their own um, emotions. They're also understanding that they're all different. And, uh, you know, they're learning to accept their difference, just to love and accept themselves just the way um, they are. Um, they are also uh, proficient readers. They can read very well, uh, either silently or loudly. They read for self-enjoyment or relaxation. So some of them uh, read a lot of novels and storybooks and all of those things. Um, and of course, they read the textbooks for the sake of information. They're also able to use information to write reports and papers and present projects and write essay kind of questions. Um, uh, and they're also able to, you know, uh, answer questions uh, and write them down in, uh, you know, in a, in 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 bigger uh, paragraphs. Okay. Um, we'll stop here. We just have um, one more minute, so we will look at this age group more in length. Um, next week. So before we end class, uh, 
Anyone likes to share something? Anyone has any questions? Uh, I'll post these, uh, the notes and, um, uh, I mean, everything in the notes is here in this uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'll post it up on the, uh, you know, uh, stream page for all of you. Yes, Divya? Yeah, I just uh, uh, wanted to ask also regarding, you were telling earlier that in uh, APC, like, uh, throughout the week, you would have like worksheets or something for the kids to do. Um, yeah, so would lo love to know more about it. If the time is limited, it's fine, ma'am. Uh, yeah, but uh, like, uh, how do you do that throughout the week? And uh, is it effective? How how do you span it across the ages, age groups? Okay, yeah, we have it specifically tailor made uh, for the lessons and uh, the, the the worksheets are based on the lesson that is taught and uh, they have some puzzles and they have to write uh, what they have learned and, uh, you know, um, what they gathered from the lessons and also how they put it into practice. And they have a, a, re a reading plan, which they have, uh, you know, scripture reading based on the topic that was taught, the lesson that was taught to, to read throughout the week. Uh, so that is part of the worksheet. Uh, but before we started doing this worksheet uh, the last year, uh, you know, we had student workbook and all of our course content, uh, the curriculum, uh, uh, the, le the, the teacher's manual and the student workbook is on our website, which anyone can access and use. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining class. Have a blessed week and um, I'll see you next week. Thank you.